I can't believe TV license and just admitted this. Let the court cases against them begin. Okay, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Roger for sending these in. Anyway, a little while ago, well, last month, he tried to cancel his TV licence. And he thought everything went okay, until that is a couple of weeks ago when he received this letter. Present occupier this time, rather than the legal occupier. So it just makes me wonder if they're starting to realise that no one cares if it's present or legal or the occupier. At the end of the day, they just seem to be clutching at straws, don't they? Because obviously they haven't got a clue who lives there, have they? The TV licence logo, and under that we have the reference number and the date. And in their lovely red ink again, which they seem to love, this address does not have a TV license. So you could be at risk of breaking the law. But then again, you couldn't be if you're not doing anything wrong. Dear sir slash madam, hang on a minute, you try to suggest I've had some sort of operation or something because I haven't. If anything, it'll be a reduction that I need. Anyway, we are writing to you because our database shows that the address is currently unlicensed. You are therefore at risk of a visit by our enforcement division. Cause yes, because obviously no one likes a salesman turning up at their door, do they? If our enforcement officers find you are watching, downloading or recording TV illegally, you could face prosecution and a fine of up to £1,000 plus any legal costs slash or compensation you may be ordered to pay. They love to throw that £1,000 fine around, don't they? Hopefully they won't be able to do that for much longer. What the law says in bold. You need to be covered by a TV license to watch or record live TV programmes on any channel or to download or watch BBC programmes on iPlayer. This applies to any device you use. Yes, I know the law, thank you very much, and I'm not doing any of those things, so thank you for my free toilet paper. And then the frightening bold letters again, contact us by the 23rd of March, or this address will be passed on to our Sheffield Enforcement Division. To be honest, I'd be more frightened of someone farting in my face, but anyway, to avoid this visit, you need to do one of the following. And it presents us with two options, buy a license or transfer your current license with a third option being underneath, but we'll get to that in a minute. Buy a license, you can either pay £159 now, or spread the cost via direct debit. Go to TV Licensing, and it gives the link. Transfer your current license, move this license from an old address to this one, so people could potentially be getting this letter, even if they have a current license, and are already paying the money. It's ridiculous, isn't it? If you don't need a license, or your property is unoccupied, please let us know, and we'll update our records and visit the web address. We shouldn't have to let you know, because I've got no need for your service. I mean, for example, I don't shop at Sainsbury's, but I don't suddenly turn up there and go, excuse me, everyone, listen to me. I don't shop here because it's pants in my opinion. So in that case, I shouldn't have to contact these guys either. If you tell us you don't need a license, we may still visit to confirm this. So what is the point in us contacting you to let you know then, if you're just going to turn up anyway? You can find more information about ways to pay for your license over leaf. Yours faithfully, meaning they'll help you contact them, Jackie Garswood, who's the customer service manager for TV licensing. So how disgraceful is that? I mean, he cancels his TV license and then a few weeks later he receives that letter. I mean, I know you could say that it may have crossed in the post, but it was a couple of weeks later, so surely it can't cross in the post, can it? So, understandably, Roger was not happy about that and put in a complaint, and then he got this response, which is where they admitted something they probably shouldn't in their email back to him. Dear Mr. Whoever, thank you for your recent contact, which has been recorded under our complaint reference, blah, 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 blah. Please use this number if you wish to contact us again. I don't think anyone wishes to contact you, TV licensing. I'm sorry you're unhappy about the letter you received from us, but to be honest, I doubt they are sorry with the amount they keep sending people, even when they've been told by people that they don't need a license. To confirm we've updated your records to show that you don't require a license as you've told us you don't watch or record programs as they're being shown on TV on any channel watch or stream programs live on an online TV service such as ITV Hub, All4, YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, Now TV, Skygo, etc. Now that is very sneaky there, because people see these companies and probably think to themselves, hang on a minute, I thought you didn't need a TV license to watch things on this. It's actually you only need a TV license to watch live, so they're very sneaky at putting that in. I know they put live there, but by putting the company names in, that's what makes people think. Anyway, or download or watch any BBC programmes on iPlayer. We'll write to you again in just under two years, unless you've told us you need a license before then, or we believe the circumstances at the address has changed. So why would they believe out of the blue that the circumstances may have changed? Does it mean they've got every house under some sort of Google Earth surveillance or something like that? Or could it be the TV licensed salespeople who they go around to knock on the doors and, and appear to try to get into people's houses? In which case, it looks like they don't believe what we say anyway. It may help, 
if I explain that TV licensing will write to all addresses where the situation isn't known. We have a duty to ensure that everyone who needs a TV license has one, which as a one-off I suppose they could argue is okay. However, they often write to people more than once, don't they? The use of television receiving equipment or to watch or record live TV programs on any channel or device or download or watch BBC programs on iPlayer without a valid license is an offence, which is kind of what they said to begin with, isn't it? So they're repeating themselves to presumably panic or worry people, which is not very good for any company, let alone a public funded one to act. For this reason, the inquiry letters sent carry a message regarding the potential consequences of unlicensed use. And this next bit is a bit which I think they can actually find themselves in a bit of trouble for. If we don't receive a response, the message will become progressively stronger in tone to encourage a response, which surely that's admitting they're intimidating people, isn't it? Which, by the way, are not even their customers at the time. So by admitting that, isn't that leaving themselves wide open to all sorts of court cases for harassment, intimidation, and anything else you can think of? People receiving these letters are under no obligation to respond, though it's helpful if they do, so as it enables us to minimise contact with people who generally don't require a licence. Well, if that's the case, TV licence, and why don't you just change your model and save yourselves and us a lot of hassle and just let people tell you if they need one. I know a lot of people out there will say, well, in that case, no one's going to do it, are they? Which could be true. However, if the BBC and TV license and really value their service and think people will actually want it, then go the subscription route and make people pay that way, rather than sending out these blanket letters to everyone who might not actually need a TV license. If we're notified that a license isn't required, we stop correspondence for a period of time. TV license and do not permanently stop writing to addresses as the occupier or circumstances may change over time. Therefore, we'll write to an address once every two years to check that the circumstances are still the same. Or just let us contact you if we need one, as I said earlier. If we're able to confirm that no one is watching or recording live TV programs on any channel or device or downloading or watching BBC programs on iPlayer, God, they like to repeat themselves, didn't they? That's the third time now they've said this. We can stop contact for another two years from the date of the visit. Thank you for the time you've taken in helping us update our records. Your sincerely, Parasad Camo... Cam Caramella Bacar TV license and of course you'd assume that'd be the end of it and it nearly slightly is unfortunately they do send people this no license needed confirmation which I've done in the previous video and I'll link that in the end because even in that one they still try and convince people that they do need a license and it's quite sneaky so that video is worth a watch and if and when they do visit Roger to be honest I think they're going to have a bit of a shock because the TV license premises in question isn't a house it's this a semi derelict workshop but I can imagine if TV license and did pay him a visit they could knock on the door as much as they want I doubt anyone would be answering